for Newcastle. Currently holding on to a top four spot. Two on winners as well over Brentford. Uh, Alexander Isak, the game winner in the 61st minute. Shaka, your old club got the three points. A little bit like Spurs, were they a little bit lucky? No, no. I, I, yeah, never I, lucky, are they, no, 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 in my eyes. And, and Isaac, again, showing his importance to, to Newcastle. But um, it was lucky in the sense that Brentford could have been two or three to the good mm. in the first 45. But, as I say, um, one goal rightly ruled off offside and, and Pope coming up very big from, from Ivan Tony. Um, otherwise, this game could have been over come, come, the, come, come the break. But the second half, it was all about Newcastle, who were by far the better of the two teams and, and, and got their just rewards. Don, with your uh, Newcastle ways, what did you make of the performance? Do you know what, Sebi? When they beat Man United, I heard Eddie Howe saying they put so much into it and there was a few tired bodies, he said, going into the West Ham game. Now, they dismantled West Ham 5-1, but it was more so West Ham giving up four cheap goals. So Newcastle stayed down. They didn't want to go back to the northeast, so they stayed down in London. And he talked about a lot of fatigue physically and mentally. So before a ball was kicked today, I was thinking four wins on the spin, go to Brentford, hard place to go and play. I would take a point, and probably Eddie Howe would have probably said that as well. So it took them a long time to get going, to probably get the lactic acid out the legs to get them going. They were nowhere near it for 45 minutes, but the team spirit pulled them through. One or two changes, a bit of fresh legs, a bit of impetus. Uh, they probably probably a little bit lucky to get the three points in the end because, as Shaka said, Brentford could have been away inside half an hour by a couple of goals. But I tell you what, you know, I watched Chelsea, working on Chelsea today. It's a team full of individuals. When I watch Newcastle, I see a team that's willing to work hard. They're willing to graft. They know their positions. They're fighting for the shirt. They're fighting for the away fans. Everything's together. And good luck to them. Five wins on the spin puts them in a brilliant position sitting third. And Champions League's on. And you can say that about Brentford as well, can't you? You know, in, in defeat, well organised, mm. patterns of play, another manager who has superseded expectations, Thomas Frank. This is a big win for Newcastle because Brentford, and particularly because Don was talking about potentially being a bit jaded Newcastle, when you go down to play Brentford, they're one of the most high energy teams in the league. And they'll get at you and they'll press you, and you've got to be ready for them. And, and and as Shaq said, it was very, very tough early on, but that's a big, big win for them going down there and getting three points at a place. And you wouldn't say this, you know, three or four years ago, whatever it was, we said Brentford in the Premier League, they'll be cannon fodder, mm -hmm. cannon fodder mm -hmm. for everybody. They have been nothing of the kind. So, yeah, uh, some great momentum for Newcastle, big three points, and they march on for their quest for the top four that Shaq said is what? Guaranteed. Mm. Guaranteed. Speaking of, here's a look at what the odds makers say about who will finish where in the Premier League table, including the top four. So Newcastle, Manchester United, Spurs and Villa all winners today. Uh, Villa 2-0 winners over Nottingham Forest. Craig, based on what we saw today, do the odds makers have it right? Yeah, I, I think had Brent Brighton got the win today, uh, I, you know, I think they could have had a push for the top four. I think that's how good they are. Uh, but I, I'm liking what I'm, I'm liking the odd that I'm seeing at the moment. I just don't think, you know, let, let's be honest about it. Harry Kane is a that wonderful footballer, right? Wonderful footballer. But Tottenham are such a poor outfit <laughs> that if 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 he wasn't there, they'd they'd be in the bottom half of the table. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't think they'd be a, too far off relegation. That's, uh, they, they don't fill me full of any confidence to get in this top four and stay there. Yeah, they were better in the second half today. How many times have we said that about Tottenham this season? Oh, the first half they were hopeless. Oh, they were better in the second half, probably 90% of the games. And I think United have a better team, better squad. I think Newcastle have a better manager, better squad in terms of how they play together, not necessarily player by player and individual but how they've been moulded together. And, of course, the top two are the top two. So I think the way it is at the moment is how it's going to finish. Why are you laughing? Well, because you say you never look at a rundown, but you're talking about the top two. That's literally what we're going to talk about. But that was luck. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just, just... Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.